lot of uh, friendly faces here, so this is uh, going to be much easier than I had been dreading for the past couple of days. Um, so uh, my name is Brad Moore. Our, my wife and I started a company called Short Leash Hot Dogs, and, and we did. We started as a food truck um, initially. So what I'm just going to kind of go through really quickly is, is kind of our experience, why we got into the business, and, and some of the trials and tribulations that we've always encountered. Um, to be brutally honest, um, there was a three-year stretch from about 2007 to 2009 in which just just three sucky years. There's no other way to say it. Um, family deaths. My wife's mother passed away. Uh, my grandfather passed away. Six days later, my, my father passed away at the age of 52 unexpectedly. Um, the bank I was working for got closed by the FDIC, and we found out we couldn't have kids. So... With all of the going on, this isn't a sob story by any means. With all that going on, Kat came to me one day and she said, you know what, you're not happy, go find your joy. We have a little bit of money in a 401k, cash it out. Let's, let's find something of our own and let's find some joy in our lives. Um, just some obligatory food porn for you. Um, so after a lot of research and a lot of kind of, you know, trying to find ourselves, um, you know, we stumbled across the food truck craze that was going on. And, and at the time, it was big in L.A., big in New York, and we realized, you know what, if we jump on this and we take advantage of it, we kind of beat everybody to the punch, especially for the Phoenix market. Um, so after a little bit of planning, you know, purchasing a vehicle, doing all those things that you would to start a business, what we figured, quite honestly, was worst case scenario, if we hate it, we have an asset that at the end of the day we can sell, maybe recoup a little bit of our investment back, but we knew we didn't have the means to go out and open a restaurant because it's just way too capital intensive. And I think ultimately the reason why people are so drawn towards the food truck is because for anybody that doesn't have restaurant experience, doesn't come from that background, I know as a lender I would have never lent us money to go and open a restaurant. <laughs> so, it's obtainable. You know, I can tell you right now, I could give you a plan for about $15,000 and four weeks of your time, you could probably have a food truck on the road. It's that easy and that obsess uh, excuse me, accessible. Um, here's the myth. The myth is the great food truck race myth. It's the idea that when you watch the great food truck race program, which was amazing for us from a PR perspective, all of a sudden, food trucks were no longer just uh, something that was going out to construction sites and industrial sites providing food where it wasn't readily accessible. All of a sudden, food trucks became cool. They became a destination. The tricky thing is people see this program, they think, oh, for $15,000 in four weeks of my time, my line will look like this. Because <laughs> that's what you see. And really, the reality is that's the great food truck race going to a small town in mid-America on a Tuesday night well, there's nothing else going on. So the entire town shows up to be part of the festivities. So um, what I think people tend to do when they're opening a food truck or trying to get into this business is they just drastically underestimate the amount of planning, the amount of work that's involved. And so I'm just going to kind of walk you through, I think, the three biggest pitfalls that I see people um, encounter. First and foremost is just the physical environment. It's kind of, uh, you know, Ironic, I guess, that the, the title for this evening is if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. The physical, I guess, environment for a food truck is excruciatingly hot. So today it's 110 degrees this afternoon. Imagine the ambient heat's 110. You're standing inside of a metal box. You've got a flat grill in front of you, two steam wells, a commercial fryer, and the heat, there's no place for it to go. So all of a sudden, you're there for two hours. The interior cabin heat's about 150 140 degrees, and it's miserable. It is. It's awful. And compound that to the fact that it's not just the two hours of service time that you're dealing with. You have an hour of load time, hour of drive time, hour to break down, hour to clean up. So it's a six-hour block that you're spending out in the sun every single day. That's just for lunch. You want to do dinner? It's another six hours. So um, it's one of the things that I think when I, when I talk to food truck operators that have tried it and unfortunately not succeeded, I've seen people go out of business in three to six weeks' time. I usually ask them, what is it that, you know, what happened, what transpired? Usually their first answer is, I had no idea how hard it was going to be. It's brutal. Anyways. Um, the other thing is, you know, the old adage for real estate, I guess, uh, is location, 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 right? So the interesting, I guess, nuance of the food truck industry that most people don't think about, you find a spot that you like, you cultivate that, you build a customer base. 
Unlike a restaurant, if a competitor is doing really well, I can't physically lift up my building, drop it next door, and hope to capture that audience. But in a food truck, you can. So what may be a great spot today, tomorrow you're sharing with three or four other food trucks. The reason I put this picture up here is actually this is spring of 2012. Um, this is what our line used to look like at Food Truck Friday. Every Friday, it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. Today, at Food Truck Friday, we have 13 food trucks in that lot. My line doesn't look like that anymore. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Um, oops. I think the third point, I think that um, a lot of people um, don't quite understand when it comes to location is um, with every space that you have, you know, with a restaurant, you have one landlord, you have one utility bill, you have one person that you really have to answer to. When it comes to the food truck industry though, the interesting thing is, I'll give you a quick example. The month of September for us, we have 54 food truck jobs booked. That means 54 property management companies, 54 certificates of insurance that have to be issued, 54 landlords that I have to deal with. Actually, I don't. My lovely wife, Kat, does. That's the only reason why this whole thing is held together. But you kind of start to understand like the, some of the logistical things that people just don't quite anticipate. And so those are the three pitfalls that I try to tell everybody about when they're getting into this business. No, not here to just kind of dog the food truck business by no means. It's an absolute blast. This is the most fun I think I've ever had in my entire life. It's the hardest work, but it's by far the most gratifying thing we've ever done. And, you know, I cannot say or express how grateful I am to the entire Phoenix community with the way that we've been embraced and the way that we have, you know, hopefully captured the hearts of, of people out there. So to you guys, thank you so much. When you, uh, I guess the, the last thing, last touch point I'll touch on is um, transitioning from a food truck to a restaurant. We've seen some great success uh, stories with people doing it. Pizza people, um, Shine Coffee, opened a, a coffee shop. Um, truck and Good Food, opened Crate Bar. So there's a lot of success stories. And I think when you're in the food truck business and you can manage the things that I just talked about, it makes that transition from a food truck to a restaurant just a little bit easier because you can deal with those types of things. You can pretty much deal with, I think, anything. That being said, I think our biggest difficulty when we transferred or we transitioned from a food truck to a restaurant was how do we build this business beyond just the two of us? How do we create a team and a team culture that really captures who we are, the style of service that we want to have, the ambiance that we want to have, and all those types of things? I was at a mobile food conference um, in Portland, and this guy summed it up the best. He was like, the food truck environment is the most unique because you work in two-man teams, you work in remote areas, and the way he quoted it, there's no room for any assholery. And it's so true because in a larger organization, if somebody doesn't have the right work ethic or somebody doesn't you know, make all the right decisions, the greater group can usually kind of band-aid that and, and, and work through it. But if you're at a remote site, 10 miles away from the restaurant, which is kind of our hub, and things break down, you have to be able to make good decisions on the fly. You have to make, be able to provide the exceptional customer service when it's 140 degrees. You have to overcome a lot of obstacles and you quickly see what type of people are, are able and willing to do that. In our uh, kind of creating our team culture, Kat and I created something that we call 80 square feet. The trailer that you saw on the first slide, that's our trailer, little eight by 10, it's 80 square feet. So something that we're truly proud of is that we came up with our eight core values of what we wanted our company to be about. I'm not gonna go through every one of them because we'd be here all day. But um, I think it's something that we hold ourselves accountable to, we have our employees hold us accountable to it, and we also hang it up in our restaurant because we want our customers to hold us accountable to it. And the only one that I'm gonna touch on right now is what I kind of tell people when it comes to the food truck industry, the, the four things that you really have to have, and it's called be a quadruple threat. You have to have quality product, you have to have innovative marketing, you have to have exceptional customer service, and I think probably the most important thing is just the discipline to see it through. Thank you so much for allowing me to, uh, to be a part of this. Thank you.